ESPN Sports. This is Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first Grizzly Insider of the year. I'm your host, Kyle Hansen. We'll take a look back at Montana's most recent win over Indiana State, as well as look ahead to the first conference game of the year for the Grizzlies against Portland State. But first, we'll kick things off right here in Terre Haute, Indiana, when the Grizzlies defeated the Sycamores 49-14 last Saturday. We'll check out the highlights from that game and hear what head coach Bobby Houck and the players had to say after the game. It was once again a big game for the Grizzly defense, and that's where the scoring started as Patrick O'Connell sacked the quarterback and forced a fumble, while Cale Edwards scooped and scored to make it 7-0 in the first quarter. The Grizz found more success with trick plays as well in this game, as Lucas Johnson hit Junior Bergen, who then found a wide-open Malik Flowers for the touchdown, and that made it 14-7 Montana. Johnson threw the first of three touchdown passes for him on the day when he hit Cole Grossman just before halftime, and the Grizzlies went into the break up 21-7. The lone touchdown from Indiana State was a 54-yard scamper by Justin Dinka in the first quarter, but after that run, the Grizz defense clamped down. Even as ISU would start to march down the field, big plays from O'Connell, Robbie Houck, and Tyler Flink halted any Sycamore momentum. O'Connell would finish with two and a half of UM's four sacks on the day. In the second half, the Grizz offense found more success as Lucas Johnson hit Keelan White to make it 28-7. Johnson then used his legs for his third rushing touchdown of the season to make it 35-7 in the third quarter. Then on the first play of the fourth quarter, Johnson threw his third touchdown pass, this one finding Ryan Simpson and the Grizzlies cruise from there as they go on to beat Indiana State 49-14. Johnson finished the game throwing for 232 yards, and Aaron Fonts had his breakout game in his young Grizz career as he led the team with eight catches for 93 yards, including arguably the highlight of the day as he leapt over an Indiana State defender. Robbie Houck led the Grizzlies with 11 total tackles, which left him just three short of breaking the school's all-time tackle record, and the Grizzlies wrapped up non-conference play with the win and improved the 3-0 on the season. They kind of did what we... Uh... They kind of did what we thought. They just they were executing well. Did a good job. They get they uh, they're well coached. They have a, they're a very sound football team. They make you earn it, and that's what they were doing. There's always a feeling out period going into any game, and you know we just thought we could attack them a lot uh, in the air, and you know it just it, it came together. I mean the game plan we put in all week, and all the guys worked together, and we all worked really hard, and you know it came out, and it looked good today. It feels awesome. The only thing better than three and zero is four and zero. So now that we got done with non-conference, we had some some good teams that we played. Um, happy to propel ourselves into the conference season and I think we've got a great team. We just got to keep keep grinding every week and get better and better. I think we play hard uh, and we focus during the week. I, I think they've got a real willingness to prepare, which leads to good performances generally. I mean, it doesn't always go that way, but they, these guys prepare hard. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I mean, that's that's what we were preaching. Uh, we have to go 3-0 in non-conference and so now it's time, you know, to start conference and everybody's really hyped for that. So, you know, the notch is about to get turned up a little bit. Coming up, hear from head coach Bobby Houck in our interview with him back in Spokane at the Big Sky kickoff. He always knew he had a good football team then, and the Grizz are proving it right now. Stick with us. We'll be right back. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Back in July at the Big Sky kickoff in Spokane, Washington, we sat down with Grizz head coach Bobby Houck for a one-on-one -on -one conversation to talk about this upcoming fall. Back then, Houck mentioned how much he liked this year's team coming into the fall and how he knew expectations were through the roof, but that was for a reason. Through three games so far this year, the Grizzlies have been proving him right. Hear what he had to say in our conversation from last July. I like this football team. I've been t saying that for a while now. I mean, starting in spring ball and on through this point, and I, uh, like the fact that other people agree with that, that I, they think we're going to have a good season. So we'll go play them and, and see if who was right. The expectations for this program are always high, but with the success this team's had the last couple of years, you know, what does that say to just where the growth has been from your first year back? Well, you know, our ex expectation is always the same, and that's to win week in, week out. And so that's how we, we've approached it externally. Maybe that's upgraded to a degree, but you know, internally it's always been the case. We're going to try to win that week and, and at the end of the season we'll evaluate how we did. The last time the Grizzlies were the regular season uh, champion was back in 2009, your last year in your first stint. You know, how much of that is a, is a motiv motivating factor to, you know, check off that next goal? Well, you're always trying to win championships. I mean, that's, that's why we play. Um, I've always felt that should be the expectation at Montana. We get another chance to try to do that come September. 
what do you like about what you guys bring back? And we'll start with the offensive side of the ball and you know some skills position players, you get some guys back from injury, you'll have some other young kids maybe filling in wide receiver, just your thoughts on some of those positions. Well, I, I think our offense has a chance to be good this year. Um, certainly we've got question marks and inexperience at some spots. Uh, the offensive line is somewhat inexperienced, but I think they've got ability. We've got good players in the wide receiver and tight end rooms. And then last year we had a little bit of a revolving door due to injury at running back. And we're hoping for a little more stability there as well. To get guys like, you know, Marcus and Nick back, you know, especially with the impact they've had. And like you said, I mean, there was, a, I think the Idaho game, you guys were on your fifth string running back or something like that as the starter, you know, to maybe get some more, you know, not so much volatility in that room. How key is that going to be to, you know, this team this year? Well, I think, you know, the opener at Washington kind of epitomized that struggle in, in the running back room. I think we started our third guy and the next guy in was fourth or fifth. Uh, and then we moved Junior Bergen there on Wednesday from wide receiver. So, we were down a bunch of guys starting in the opener and it, it, it just continued through the season and I think, uh, I thought it was good. Our, our guys did a nice job stepping up when called upon and I think you can, you can build that philosophy at every position and when it's your turn you got to go perform for your team. When you look at the defensive side of the ball, you got four all-league players preseason, including one Robbie Houck on the on that list. You know, just to see those uh, four guys get some recognition, knowing how good the defense was last year. You know, what are the expectations for that side of the ball, uh, knowing what you guys bring back on that side? Yeah, having four preseason all-conference guys is maybe reassuring a little bit on the defensive side, and that reflects the plays those guys made last year. Um, we we played defense at a pretty historic level uh, for our program. A year ago, the, the defense was hard to deal with, and with that good nucleus of players coming back, uh, I think our defense is going to play really well this fall. Coming up, here at Portland State, head coach Bruce Barnum had to say in our conversation with him in Spokane and what his expectations were for this team coming into the year. Get social with Grizzly fans and follow MTN Sports on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Montana's next opponent on the football field is Portland State. The Vikings are off to an 0-2 start this season, but they've played two FBS opponents and had a near upset of San Jose State to open the year. We caught up with head coach Bruce Barnum back at the Big Sky kickoff in Spokane, Washington in July. And this is what he had to say about his team and his expectations coming into the fall. Your thoughts on, you know, the polls coming out, you know, Portland State's kind of one of these programs that, you know, you guys kind of a little bit of a bubble team sometimes. You guys can surprise some people, but, you know, your thoughts on where you guys sit right now and expectations going into the fall. I like where my team is at. We're at 110, 110 people, student athletes for camp. I'm actually going to have to turn some away, and that's a product of a little bit of COVID, a little bit of, you know, or the co extra COVID year. But I've never had that depth. Um, I've got over 70 people on campus right, right now working out. Um, I've never had those numbers. So uh, the polls, yes, I saw them, and they're about where I thought we were gonna be picked, honestly. Uh, but you look at, and where, where are you gonna pick the teams in this conference? I think it's a very competitive conference. I think the parity is ridiculous. Everybody has good players. Um, yes, he has a couple more than we do, but keep them healthy every Saturday, there's something there. Um, you know, you see Eastern Washington, perennial power, uh, that they're pick sixth. So, uh, and you hear this from every guy that sat here, but obviously the ones uh, most important as, as you go through the season. You mentioned that depth, you know, we'll, I guess we'll go ahead and start on the offensive side. You lose a guy like Davis, who's been such a good football player for you guys the last few years at quarterback, but, you know, what do you like about what you bring back on the offensive side? And, it, you know, it seems like every year, like you mentioned, you have athletes, and now it sounds like you have some depth to add there as well. So what do you like about what you have on that side of the ball? Uh, quarterbacks, you know, th that's everybody's fear. Okay, we did. Davis is hopefully starting a great career now in, in, with Montreal up in the CFL, but um, I like where we've been recruiting. I like coming out of spring. If we play tomorrow, I like QB1. Um, he's been there. He knows the system. He's different than Davis, so the offense will, will change a little bit as far as maybe a little bit more of this. And, you know, Davis had a, a huge arm, a big arm, uh, but he didn't move as good as the next one coming up. He wasn't as tall. So there's some things 
you might see a little bit of a change offensively on game day, but it's just uh, trying to take advantage of what he's great at. On defensive side, what do you like on that side about what you guys bring back and maybe some of the up-and-comers that you have uh, on your team? I like to back in right now the best. Uh, Anthony Adams is here representing us um, for about the third time. He's an All-American multi guy for those teams. But we've recruited that depth um, that we can do different things. Not, maybe not as much man coverage, more zone. We're actually to the point, I, th I think, we're so confident with that back end. I'd like to move Anthony from corner back to free safety. Uh, stay tuned on that one for when we get in uh, deeper into camp. But um, that's our strength, I think, on that side. And you know, you mentioned the depth. I mean, have you noticed like changes because of that depth? Like in the off season, heading into camp, have you noticed maybe like a different energy about the team because you have a lot of players and because you know that's not a you know that that's something you guys have to your advantage now. Yes, it, it's there. What I think is helping us more, and that is the age of them. Um, I've got guys, you know, playing for their that extra year that we talked about. Um, that experience has helped my locker room. I brought in a running back. Uh, the guys, I was kind of choosy on the the transfers we brought in. I brought guys in great football players. I brought in a running back from Boise State, grad transfer. He's going to help my locker room as much as he's going to help me on the field. Uh, I mean, that's what I'm trying to fix just so we, when we get in those tough situations, um, adversity, whatever, um, we're going to get that final inch or, you know, game of inches uh, this year uh, because of that maturity in my locker room. What is maybe what Portland State needs to take that next step to get into the postseason? What do, where do you think that kind of lies with your team? What do you think that next step is? Stay healthy. I, I have to stay healthy. I thought we were a playoff team last year. I did. Um, and we were so banged up, my quarterback, we talked about Davis. Uh, Davis from Southern Utah game on was playing with a broken elbow. Uh, just we were so banged up and chipped up and playing the tough game of, you know, hey, I'll be out there, coach, you know. But keep him healthy. Uh, that's the first meeting I had. First meeting I had at the end of last season was with my strength coach and my trainer uh, and my doctors to make sure I get our entire team to game day. So with that, you know, I think we can put something together every Saturday. Coming up, it wasn't just Bruce Barnum that we got a chance to talk to at the Big Sky kickoff. Hear from Portland State's player representatives coming up next. Take coverage of the Grizz with you. Download our app for your favorite mobile device today. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider. Anthony Adams and Tyson Pauling were the two players that Portland State brought to the Big Sky kickoff in Spokane back in July. We sat down with both of them, and this is what they had to say about this year's Viking team. To shift to the polls, just your thoughts on kind of where you guys landed and you know the expectations you guys have for Portland State this coming fall. Yeah, so I mean, seeing the polls every year is kind of interesting. We take a look. Obviously, you have top of the conference, middle of the pack, lower con lower um, parts of the conference. Um, and I think we were picked eight and nine um, between the coaches and media, which is fine with us. We could honestly care less about where we're ranked in the preseason polls because we all know um, come Saturdays, it's what you can do on the field. Um, and if anything, we kind of feel like it gives us an, a little bit of an advantage. Um, Maybe some other teams and coaches will look down on us a little bit. Um, obviously, we know we're talent-wise, we're at the top of the conference. Um, it's just whether or not we can put it together. One thing Coach Barnum kind of touched on was that uh, two things really was the depth that this team currently has and just how it's something that maybe hasn't really been there before and also just some returning experience with players who've been able to use that extra year. So as players, have you noticed those elements maybe, you know, help the team at all this offseason or have you noticed to maybe boost anything uh, as you guys get ready for the fall? Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I've been here the last five years, seen a lot of different offseasons, seen how, how, how the offseason is supposed to work. Um, and this year it feels like there's a lot more buy-in. Um, we've been doing things a lot differently this offseason, a lot more player ran practices, um, a lot more numbers in the weight room. Um, and this is actually the first full offseason that we've gotten with our, with our strength coach since he's been there in 2019. Um, so hoping to see a lot of benefits from that as well. 
from your perspective on the, the defensive side of the ball here, you know, what do you guys like that you bring back? And, you know, you like some of the, these returners, some of the guys stepping up. I mean, what are some of the things that kind of stand out to you the most when you look at that side? Um, a lot of talent. We have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the ball and a lot of experience. Um, I mean, we're going to rush the passer and we're going to play man coverage. Um, and that's kind of our mantra, and we know that and we live by it. Um, our dude is better than your dude, and that's what we're going to, that's what we're going to do every Saturday. Portland State's interesting because it's one of these teams you guys kind of are kind of like a bubble team, right? You know, you guys will beat some top teams and maybe drop a couple of close games, things like that. So for you guys, from your perspective, what's maybe the next steps that you guys need to take to, you know, make those deep, the deep season runs, get to the playoffs? Where do you guys maybe see that lying in there? Well, I think going back to your last question, it kind of has to do with that experience a little bit. Um, we have a huge senior class, a really strong senior class that's been here a long time. We know what it takes to win. Like you said, we've been in those big games. We've won big games. Um, and now it's just winning the games that we're supposed to win and winning those big games. Um, and I think also off the field as well, staying healthy um, is a huge part of it and also the preparation. Middle of the pack with those polls that uh, just came out today. So your thoughts on you know, those expectations and where uh, the team's expectations currently are as you guys get ready for the fall? I would say that our team is ready and we kind of don't look at any of the preseason polls just because we've always been placed last in our conference or close to last. Um, so it just, it fires us and you know, we don't pay attention to it. We just want to play football and win. With, you know, the offensive side of the ball is interesting because Davis Alexander was such a, a leader for this team at quarterback the last few years. Now with him gone, you know, that changes things a little bit. So from an offensive perspective, you know, as an offensive lineman too, you know, just working with a new quarterback, new players, just what's that been like with you guys as you get ready for the season? So it's been good. I mean, Davis Alexander was a, a pretty big loss, but we've had guys that are ready to step up into the role. Uh, Dante Sachere, which is going to be our guy if we played uh, this Saturday. Um, it's been good. He's been getting confidence in his arm. We already know he's a runner. Uh, I call him basically a gazelle because he looks like a gazelle when he runs, but the confidence in him and seeing him in seven ons and he's ready to, you know, lead the team and we're ready for him too. What stands out to you uh, most about the offense, like uh, with what you guys bring back and who might be stepping up this year? I feel like we bring a lot of weapons back. I mean, we brought back our whole wide receiving core. Uh, we brought back four out of the five linemen. And then we brought in some good uh, running backs and we have Dante stepping up. So we have a lot of guys coming back, about nine out of the 11 guys on offense. So it's going to be good for us this season. You know, and like I kind of asked Anthony, you know, Portland State, one of these teams, like you guys can win big games and maybe lose some close games and just kind of be in that middle of the pack. But you guys, you know, show that you can compete. So for you guys, from your perspective, what is that next step that this team can take and, you know, find that consistency and then ultimately get to the playoffs? Well, I'd say we've seen it a lot this summer. Uh, we had 64 guys show up to our summer workouts, and um, we just got guys ready to compete. We got guys hitting PRs in the weight room. Um, we got a bunch of guys just ready to play for each other, and we haven't had that in Portland State since I've been here um, for five years. So it's, it's good to see the energy and the momentum that we're bringing into this season because it's just excited, like we're all going to play for each other. And a lot of that energy and momentum and things like that, has that come from some of that depth too and maybe some of those guys showing up ready to work? Like is that maybe where you've seen a lot of that from? Is just it, like maybe just more guys ready to roll than in years past for this team? Yeah, I would say it's our senior leadership. I mean, we set a standard uh, our freshman year and we've carried it on through our senior year and now a lot of guys are buying into it. So it's, it's very, you know, it's good to see because we set that culture and we want to leave Portland State at, you know, the top of the top. So. When, with a lot of these guys too who are kind of like utilizing their extra year and getting a chance to you know play a little bit more I mean how, how nice is that to have you know from a team as guys who like you know they care about the program so much they want to come back and you know take advantage of the opportunities they can to try and get this team back to where they they want it to be I mean it's good and speaking for myself I mean having that extra year is huge because I'm able to learn more of the defense and well defenses in general and then just having you know that leadership and that you know older guys on the team just really boosts the young guys and you know we've learned a lot you know through the five years of being here so totally yeah and so ultimately you know when you guys hit the field for fall camp what's the biggest thing you guys are looking for uh, as you guys get ready for the season and you know two fbs schools and a tough conference schedule i would say the biggest thing that we're looking for is playing together um for Portland State in the previous years, it's been offense and defense until we kind of got to game day, and it really didn't help us out. But going through this offseason, and especially after last season, 
we don't see it as offensive defense. We see it as Portland State Vikings, and we see you know just one team, and anybody can really play any position. That's how we're, you know we're treating it, and we're excited to go into fall because we're just we're ready to dominate. Ready to dominate. Coming up, we have all of your information on how you can watch Montana's game against Portland State this Saturday on MTN stations across the state. Stick with us. We'll be right back. There's more coverage of the Grizzlies online anytime at montanasports.com. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider, sponsored by Albertson Safeway. Welcome back to Grizzly Insider. Well, the Montana Grizzlies will officially kick off Big Sky play on Saturday when they welcome Portland State to Missoula. MTN is your home for Big Sky Conference football throughout the season, and you can watch the Grizz on your local MTN station, including KPAX in Missoula and CW Montana throughout the state. Check your local MTN website for more information and follow our coverage online at montanasports.com. Well, that does it for our first episode of Grizzly Insider, and thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Kyle Hansen here in Indiana, but we'll see you on Saturday when the Grizzlies welcome Portland State. Have a great evening, everyone.